each other. We are reminded how precious the fellowship is that we share. But we also gather around in worship through media, realizing that it is God who is the source of our worship. And what a fellowship and what a joy divine we have leaning on the everlasting God. So today we'll begin our worship with these words. Give thanks to God with all your hearts. We will hold nothing back from God. Sing full-throated praises to our God. We will join in the chorus of thanksgiving for God's abiding love. Glorify God and that word we know as Jesus Christ. We will worship our God with wonder and joy. pray. Our God, we pray for empathy, seeking to understand ideas, people, situations, ourselves, our faith, our hopes, seeking, exploring the why of life, the why of who we are. Seeking because we know that only by seeking do we go beyond ourselves to where answers reside, answers that we had never considered. And we are enriched by becoming more whole. We pray that we would be vulnerable, open to being influenced to new ideas, new possibilities lives enriched with new experiences, horizons, things we thought not possible, surprise us, O oh God, our God. We know change causes us to be vulnerable. As we become less capable of adapting, changes seem greater as our limits become more apparent. Our abilities seem in decline, simple things 
small changes take on great magnitude. Keep ideas, possibilities, dreams, hopes growing in and around us so that change is not an inhibitor, but stimulation into a new life. Cause our attitude to change, to be invitational, not to create whirlwinds in our lives, but measured growth. Keep us curious about life, exploring and discovering, growing into understanding more of the mystery of life as we walk with you, author of life and our guide. As we seek these things for ourselves, we pray that they become realities for those around us. Use us as channels of understanding influence, curiosity, to help others grow. We take our part in your creation more fully when we offer ourselves to others and to you. Use us, we pray. Place people in our path that will cause us to grow and whom we can help grow. The things we desire, we pray for those whom we find difficult to love as well as those close to us. Lord, lead us into wholeness, whatever that may be. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us take this opportunity to make our confession before an almighty God. Precious Lord, strip away the mask I wear during the week to get by. Lay my soul bare before you today. Let me see genuine love. Show me the love that hates evil and holds on to what is good. Strip away the mask that holds my emotions in check when I should share your love with someone. Let me see the joy of giving to others. Show me the power of blessing those who persecute me. Strip away the mask that grins and lies and lets the world think otherwise about a child of God. Amen. Receive these words, a blessing, an assurance, a pardon, an altar, a pew, a seat on the bus, a kitchen table, all become holy places when we confess before God. Today in this holy place, God meets us, hears us, and forgives us. In this holy place, God empowers us with genuine love to share with a hurting world. Be for God a holy, loving people. Amen.
please join me for our prayer of illumination. Almighty God, prepare us to discover your word for us today. Help us hear your servant, and in the spoken words, hear your word. May these words help us recognize our loyalties in the many fields of life through which we travel. Amen. The epistle lesson today is coming from Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another and show an honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The gospel lesson is from Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are set in your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man come in his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for all that you are doing in the midst of this world and in the midst of our lives. We ask that as we share this time in worship, that you will be very present with us. Wherever we're viewing the video, whether we're viewing it in family settings, or whether we're by ourselves, Lord, may we be reminded of your fellowship, the fellowship that you have with us, the joy that we have in you. God, would you give us the courage and the strength to leave new lives under your management. We pray in your holy name, amen. Living under new management, living under new management. 
both lessons read today address how we are to live, how we are to live and how we are to govern our lives. Jesus and Paul both gave instructions that went against conventional understandings of how we should live and how our lives should go. Paul's initial statements, some of us may find pretty easy to embrace because there were statements of things that we probably ascribe to already and probably ascribe to most of our lives because they are things that seem noble, noble existence to genuine love, to do good, to have mutual affection, show honor, and to have zeal, and to serve the Lord. Those are things we would not argue against. Those are things that don't go against the grain. Those are things that we probably feel are right on target. But then Paul goes into some statements that seem a little bit more challenging. It is almost like it is a bait and switch. <laughs> he gets us feeling all good about our ability to live this life. And then he tells us some challenging things that we cannot live unless our hearts are changed and that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Because even things that seem positive are loaded with challenge. Rejoice in hope. Well, we know hope is something that we don't have already, that, that we're looking forward to it. And, and so some people will say, well, how can I rejoice in hope? I am longing for something. I, I, I'm trying to have faith that it will happen. But Paul is saying that even in the midst of that state of waiting, anticipating, that we are to have joy. Then he also says that bless those who persecute you. Bless and not curse them. Now, that's something that he go, hmm. You mean if I am going to live a godly life, I have to bless the people who persecute me? I can't get even with them? I can't say things back mean to them or nasty to them. I cannot curse them. No, not under the new management, the new management that your life is under. It requires something different. Then Paul moved the things that we probably can more easily accept when he said rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. It's pretty easy to celebrate and to be happy when people are happy and they're rejoicing. And, 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 and if we have any type of compassion, we can show sympathy and we can weep with those who weep. We're instructed to live in harmony with one another, to live in harmony with one another. Then he comes back with a challenge. Do not repay evil for evil. Do not repay evil for evil. Now, I know some of us are like, well, that's not what we learn on the playground. Because usually on the playground, if a bully was pushing us around and, and if we just kept running away from him and the bully kept pushing us, so we were encouraged to stand up to him. Well, is standing up to a bully repaying evil with evil? Not necessarily. Because standing up could also be, in dem could be shown by demonstrating your strength of love 
that you can look beyond what he's doing. And you can reach for the, the, the true need that he has or she has inside her heart. Oh, when we say evil for evil, we mean that, yes, someone does something bad and you make a choice to do something bad just to get even. Remember, we're living under new management. That it's not the way that we live. That's not the way we govern our lives as believers. As believers, we are to be found doing good in all circumstances, doing good. He also tells us, never avenge yourself. Never avenge yourself. Now, that sounds kind of strange now in the political and very polarized environment that we live in. It appears that people are constantly avenging themselves. A statement is made and a rebuttal is made and that each person has to attempt to outdo the other. But there are still voices that are reminding us that when they go low, we go high. Michelle Obama, one of our former first ladies, she constantly reminds us of that. When they go low, we go high. That's scripture. That's the Bible. Because Paul says, Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now, Paul pushes this even a little farther. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. That's not what we were taught. We're taught to avoid our enemies. We're taught definitely not to do anything to benefit them. We're taught to have strict demarcations. And some of our enemies are assumed enemies. Because sometimes we make enemies out of people that we're just not familiar with and we declare that they're enemies. I can honestly say, I, I don't know that I have enemies. Whenever I hear this word, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not certain. I, there, there are some people where I have a, a challenging relationship with them because they are the way that they are and I am the way that I am and, and our personalities don't click. But simply because I don't get along with someone or, or our personalities um, have conflict in them, the way we um, do things, the way we experience things. Does that make someone my enemy? But even if the person is your enemy, and even if the person has done something that is a threat to you, Paul says, if your enemies are hungry, Feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Can you imagine the type of life we're being called to live? It seems that it is impossible to live all of this out, to live in this way, to live under this management, this management of grace, this management of love that Jesus teaches us about. The reason why we do all of this, because we're instructed, do not become overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. The only way to destroy evil is with good. 
we can't outdo it. Diabolical forces will not be put asunder by us getting more vicious, angry, battling. But when we share the peace of God in turbulent situations, it can change everything around. Now we have a great example in Jesus. When Jesus is talking to the disciples and he's telling them about what he will encounter in Jerusalem. I understand Peter saying, no, this cannot happen because Peter was thinking about, well, why would any human being choose to go through trial, tribulation, heartache, pain, suffering, and death? But Jesus rebuked Peter because Jesus warns and tells us that the way that we think that we can save our lives is not what saves us. The harder we work to protect and shield ourselves, the more time we invest in saving our lives and rescuing ourselves at the detriment of others, we wind up losing our life. Jesus says, for those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. So when we give up something for the sake of the kingdom, we find life. Our treasure leisure time, when we give that up to help someone else, when we give that up for the benefit of the kingdom, we save our lives. Now, many people say, now, none of this makes sense. This isn't the way that we're programmed. These are not the normal path to success that's uplifted by society. But this is what is uplifted for our lives when we're under a new management, the management of grace, the management of the love of Christ that is demonstrated in the world. That we live and we do things differently that we're unconventional because we strive to be holy. We strive to be like him, to be like Jesus. Now, having a new management team is never easy. Some of us, we're gone through management changes in our careers. And, and sometimes when a new manager comes in, we're very fearful of what will change and what will change for us and how our lives will change. And we're okay with the new management team and, and the new manager and our new supervisor, as long as he or she are doing things that we already want to do and that we've already bought into. But when they start to give us new requirements, a new vision, a new stru structure, we wind up backing away from the table and sometimes becoming anxious and angry. And we will yell out to ourselves and those around us, this isn't the way we've always done it. Well, that is how it is when Jesus takes control and you allow Jesus to manage your life, you allow the Holy Spirit to manage your life. That our practices that we have been become accustomed to may not fit the new paradigm. And we're asked to live life differently and live in life differently 
can be a challenge. But we're not on this journey alone. There are other Christians walking along with us. And there is the Holy Spirit teaching, leading, and guiding us. You just have to get out of the way. Yes, let your ego go and embrace. Embrace the new management strategy that leads to life. For those of us who want to save our lives, will lose them. But those of us who lose our life for the sake of the kingdom will find it. So we don't have to be discouraged. The songwriter said, why should I feel discouraged? Why shall the shadows come? You know that Jesus is our portion and a constant friend is he and that his eye is on the sparrow. And I know, I know that he watches me.
we have come to the end of our time together today. But I ask that you continue to pray for me. And I will pray for you. May we stand firmly in the words of the song that his eyes are on the sparrow and I know he watches me and I know that he watches you. May the peace of God surround you and keep you. Amen.